Islam, 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 and welcome to Sisters Standing on Law. This is your host, Anita Ill, along with my co-host, Ras Mariah Bay. Islam, peace and love. <laughs> I'm on up with that song. That's such an up with song. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. What's going on? Yes. It's sister standing on law. Do you realize it's Father's Day today? Uh, you know what? I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I don't yeah. never remember these things. Yeah, we're going to get a calendar going on for our event. But, yes, it, today falls on Father's Day. Remember we did um, sister standing on law that fell on Mother's Day? Not this year, but the year before. It's a few things, but anyway. I remember mm-hmm. it happened one year. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. We had to change our whole itinerary when we realized that it was, in fact, Mother's Day. So, yep. you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But well, we're going to be talking about family, so we include it yeah, all in. Yeah, and right? it is appropriate. Uh, mm-hmm. This broadcast is in conjunction with the final call theory. What to do when Department of Family Services knocks on your door? Continue, or I should say, what to do when the Department of Unfamily Services knocks on your door? Uh, yeah, because they're not—they're not family oriented. They're not here for the family at all. They are just here to generate revenue, which is income in any form or fashion possible. And you know what I, I I the more I look and study this American Constitution seventeen ninety one and the more I look at what is happening with people and people's mental conditioning and it it and it's not just more this is people across the board. It is so it's, it's, I can see why we are in this condition because the, there's been a gross turning upside down of everything. And the one really? thing that this land that everybody flocked to stood for was freedom. This was the land of freedom. This was the land of justice. This was the land of peace. This was the land of harmony. This is no longer the land of freedom, justice, or harmony because the people look to their servant or pseudo servant and ask instead of recognizing that this land is for the people and the government that is established on this land is for the people, by the people. It is so unimaginable and unconscionable to hear living in squalor and that there are people who are being attacked by contractors of an alleged government body. That is so absolutely unconscionable because it's not that's not what this land stands for, that's not what this government stands for, and that's not what the people are supposed to be accepting. And I know I want to say one thing because I know I always hear people, especially sons, talking about, well, you know you got that birth certificate. Well, you know your mother gave you up as a slave. That's bullshit. I'm just going to be so plain with that. That is such bullshit. And anybody who says that don't understand the history of this land, nor do they understand the American Constitution, 1791. They can run with that. They can run with any piece of trash. And the sad thing is they will incite other people to run with them. Mm-hmm. You have people who don't comprehend that this country, is the reason that this country is based off of international law, the reason that that American Constitution is national law, is because this is the first land map where two nations was 
allowed to exist side by side. This is the first why it was fought against by the families of the earth because they knew it would cause problems. And here we are today. We in problems because we have two nations on this land who are supposed to be living side by side in peace and harmony, and yet you got the subordinate nation that the that the, the original people of this land allowed to come here and live, uh, uh, um, enslaving the very people or the very lineal descendants of the people who allowed them to come here and live and enjoy peace, harmony, and prosperity and freedom. Because if you go back in time, these modern Europeans who came over here, they didn't have to pay to live nowhere. We said, go out and find yourself some space and live in peace, and that's what they did. And they got all these movies that show you that's exactly what they did. And today, the very people who we allowed to come here and find a space and live in peace is claiming all of the land and then going to turn around and call themselves charging the people, the Aboriginal indigenous people of this land who allowed them to come here. They're demanding from them not lawful money, but debt notes. And that is an atrocity, and the only way it can happen, and it ain't just happening to more. This is happening to other modern Europeans who are not as privileged. This is not just an issue for more. This is an issue for anybody on this landmass that is being oppressed by another group of people, and that is exactly why the Constitution was written, and it is so sad that the majority of the people who have challenges to this day have absolutely no knowledge of that document, don't understand its protection, and it's, and it's hot to tell you that that was written for some, some, uh, some what do they call them, some some white males to benefit white males or was written, um, uh, um, we weren't a party to it, and they were right. We're not a party to it because that document was written to keep corporations in check, not people. Or they'll say the Constitution was suspended. How can a document that is written to keep corporations in check be suspended, and then they're going to tell me that it was suspended by the very corporation that it was written to protect the people from. That's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely ridiculous. And so because people don't understand that that is the premise for the American Constitution, it is an international document because it it governs the interchange between the Aboriginal and Indigenous people of this land, Moors, under the Moorish or Moorish Empire, and the modern Europeans who fall under the newly formed nation entitled the United States of America, which Hillary Clinton talks about in her address in 2012 in the Benjamin Franklin Room of the White House. Even Barack Obama talked about it. So this is not new. This is a matter of national and international record. So then we come to our series today of the, the, what to do when the Department of Family Services knocks on your door. Brings us right back to the American Constitution in conjunction with the United Nations Convention on the Prevention of Genocide Resolution 96 dated 11 December 1946, where it says, genocide is a crime under international law contrary to the spirit and aims of the United Nations and condemned by the civilized world. Article 2 in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, racial, or religious group as such. One, Killing members of the group, B, or two, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, 
D, imposing measures intended to prevent birth within the group. And E, the one, wow. all of them, all of them are relevant to this subject matter, but E takes it right on home, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. Then you have the United Nations Rights of Indigenous People, Resolution 61-295, Article 7, where it says, one, indigenous individuals have the right to life, physical and mental integrity, liberty, and security of person. And two, indigenous people have the collective right to live in freedom, peace, and security of distinct people and shall not be subjected to any act of genocide or any other acts of violence, including forcibly removing children of a group to another group. So there you have it. You have three documents, all international documents, and they are written to enforce the aboriginal indigenous family of this land and all of planet Earth. But here, here is the one qualifier that makes this relevant. You must have a nationality. Oh, man. Without nationality, none of this applies to you. You can run around here all day long talking about, I'm going to be Negro, I'm going to be black, I'm a nigger. You can run around, I'm African American. You can run around here, or I'm African, African people, this, that, and the other. None of those terms denote a nationality. None of them. So you still outside of the protection of the national and international law. So you can be the martyr that you want to be running under the Negro, black, colored, African, African American, but you and your family lineage is going to go down for that. And why would you want to do that? It's wrong. It's wrong. Um, you know, I just wanted to go back and, and catch right up to where you are, uh, bit of history that is food for thought, not food for thought, it's evidence evidence of the situation because we have to remember that the whole problem for us not being able to uh, uh, historically historically know uh, what's going on, and, and remember that's the thing, uh, they said the only way that can break these, these operations is to have some historical reference. So when they tell you in, in things, uh, King Alfred and also when you really mentioned so on, uh, and, and then uh, what what uh, Senator Barry said about we've extinguished the the light where they can find out you know basically is what he's saying. When you when you look at that, it just it it means that wow maybe I need to look into what this historical background is. So now, uh, as you were mentioning, the Constitution is really a peace document, and everyone needs to understand that for real because that's what it's supposed to be enforced. Because as you said, it actually protects. Uh, the, the, the liberties, because see, I like I like to think that this land is still the land of the free. I mean, it, and the right and, and so on, because the people of the land have have been shut down in terms of the fact that they are the government for real, for real, and that mm-hmm. these, uh, these documents were established, as you said, it's it's really interesting that hey, it was written to protect what's happening, the corporation or anyone really from infringing upon you. So when you look at it from that perspective, when you look at it from that truth, you know, it's like, wow, we really need to uh, maintain our understanding of that because the Constitution is a written instrument as such. It, this is a, this is a, a, a res judicata case, well, actually, uh, well, let's say, yeah, it is, but it was in 1905. And it says the Constitution is a written instrument as such. Its meaning does not alter that which it meant when it was adopted. Now, Adopted, it means now. So someone adopted this constitution, which what did they adopt? The principles of of governing. They were um, really ancient principles of governing. That's really what it was that was handed down. Um, now, and handed down to who? To a group of people who have been uh, mistreated and and the tyranny over from the British. That's a fact. But they don't teach that in school because then you put the dots mm-hmm. together and. and it, yeah, and then another another case law, well, and this is where we should really realize that it, they can't make, this affirms that they can't make anything, states can't make laws, 
if they if they made any and they have no standing and they and they really you're not a state resident. See, a lot of people think that they live in New Jersey, New York, California, wherever. You do not because those are uh, uh, subdivisions of a nation. So you you're the you know this is your national dumb self. But this second uh, case law says we are bound to interpret the Constitution in the light of the law as it existed. At the time that it was what adopted, and we keep telling people they they adopted this constitution. They didn't write it and 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 all of that for them. I mean, it doesn't make sense. How how can that be um, a fact? Now, lastly, the Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land, and any law that is repugnant to it uh, is null and void. No, repugnant means you know a uh, 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 contrary, um, abrogating, violating it, but. You nobody would know what what is repugnant if they don't know what it is the Constitution is itself. So how can you recognize that something's repugnant? So with that being set aside, the, going back to the history, when these modern Europeans, who everyone knows, everyone knows there is there was um, that they came here on boats for real. I don't, I'm just that they came and that they were in. Slavery. They were in tyranny. In fact, if you read the Articles of Association, which they do not put in the classroom at all, we have it on the site on the Forgotten School. We've said this before, but I just want to set the stage for what we're, what, why we are saying to you: these people are not family. But these are just proofs mm-hmm. of that. All right, that's all. Just simple proofs of calling themselves foreign, just because they're at the you have modern Europeans and their structures, their institutions, their um, uh, uh, artifices and things that they put up are foreign to you, but you're, you're not the foreigner up in here. They are. So um, so you got qualified when you say that or else you, you can really be in trouble because you're giving them a power that they don't have. Like we got to stop them from saying, you know, you're in the city of, uh, California or, or whatever. We got to stop that. We can't make that, we can't let that claim be made. And the reason is if you go into law, because see, if you don't know history, you can't know law. And you got to know law to protect yourself because you are the law manifest, quite frankly. So when they say, you know, in the city of so and so, you know, we really got to squash that. And so some people say, well, what do we say? Well, that's where the study comes in. So you know what to say. Recognizing that you're, you claim you're a national, so you're in a national domicile. You're not in a quasi national, which is what every single state is. And that just simply means that you're a resident in a state. Naturally, um, where you say you domicile will automatically equip your civil liberties. All of your liberties, your rights, same thing, liberties, rights. I'm not talking about civil rights and civil rights marches. We're talking about civil, civilian, civil liberties or rights, which which we must qualify that word and not confuse it with, well, I'm not a part of the civil rights movement that is hinged upon the 14th Amendment. No, we're not talking about that because nothing's hinged on that for you because that's not even, that's that was written for corporations. Once again, the Constitution is, is to protect you from that. However, the 14th Amendment is not a part of the organic constitution. You have to know that. And when you do the work, the background on that, you will find that that particular clause, 14th Amendment, was never ratified, already done. It, it, it doesn't even exist. So when these modern Europeans um, were coming into they were they they if you read the Articles of Association, uh, just the preamble or the purpose, you'll find this. But I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to show you that it says that um, the pre- we find that the present unhappy situation of our affairs is occasioned by a ruinous system of colony administration adopted by British ministry about the year 1763, evidently calculated for enslaving these colonies. Did it say enslaving? African Americans or Negroes who said enslaved in their colonies and within the British Empire in prosecution of which system various acts have been passed for raising a revenue in America. That's exactly what the, I mean, you said before, read that, read the Articles of Association, because that's exactly what they're doing to you. Now, and it says, for raising revenue in America for the purpose of depriving the American subjects. Well, you're not the American subjects, they are. They're, they're calling themselves. In many institutions, instances of trial by jury exposing their guards to danger. Now, 
That I'm just reading that's their purpose. That's part of their purpose. However, this is addressed to, um, these are from a couple of the people representing New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Bay, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, so on. Well, those were not those were not states. They were companies that these people were, as you have proven and told people to read the 1643 um, Articles of Association, Articles of Confederation. If you read them, you will see that they are all companies, not, uh, they weren't even really states, uh, formalized states, because you know, a state is the gathering of uh, people who occupy a certain part of the land, but they were not formal yet. They were still being treated. They were only here working in these companies that later became known as the Union States and then as the, um, uh, well, still the Union States formalized and brought into the fold of constitu- uh, into the constitutional fold uh, by the Constitution itself. So, so they mention all that, and it says that these people deputed to represent themselves in Continental Congress. Now, hold on. Held in the city of Philadelphia on the fifth day of September, 1774. Now, hold on a moment. If there was a Continental Congress existing in Philadelphia, which is the original capital, that's really the capital. For us, that's where all the law, and, and that's where they came into um, the fold there. And then the Washington, D.C. was established as their, quote-unquote, White House capital. But read this now. Deputed to represent them in a continental congress held in the city of Philadelphia on the fifth day of September 1774. But then they'll tell you and treat you like there's no government that existed except them. So this is where if you could get to thinking you free yourself. Now, deputed means, in case anybody doesn't know, um, not that it's a hard word or anything, but I look up everything just to make sure. It's like a representative or a group of rep- people representing a cause or whatever, or what we call plenty of potentiaries now, so deputed. And it's the same, same as deputized. In other words, they deputized or deputed for representations of a couple of people to represent them to address this issue at the Continental Congress in the city of Philadelphia on the fifth day of September 1774. That's what it means. So, um, so, so when you look at that, it's stone cold proof that there was a government already existing. That that's the Continental Con- Congress, which was us, not them, because they're here trying to gain their independence. So with that, and with a whole bunch of other historical things, one of the main things is um, not teaching, say what I just read, or a whole bunch of other um, things in their public school system because they are really only talking about themselves. Listen, they've had an arduous life. They have been uh, enslaved. They came over here with nothing. They don't they don't not admit that. They admit that. Um then their their descendants came later through Ellis Island and lived in the first ghettos and slums in New York. Um they don't not admit that. In fact that in the Library of Congress, a picture of that, Mulberry Street. It's not, it's in it's in all the history. They don't hide that they came with nothing. So when you look at that, those things, and you bring it up to the fact that one, you know, they didn't really give the background history on all of this, but their descendants, their descendants came over with nothing. How is it that they created a for instance, government, I mean, um, courts unlawfully, uh, any type of institution that you think is your government, and that brings us to the family services uh, program. Um, well, I don't know if I should call it a program because it's a revenue uh, maker now. And it, it might be a good idea so that we could set the stage even further if you would give the history on why family services was implemented in the first place because they had nothing to do with the natural people at all. At all, no. at all. And you no, it all right. did not. I'm trying to see if I can if I, where, well, I can't remember what I did with my disc that had that information on there. But well, while you look for that, right I just wanted to I add, it. when I say the natural people, I mean when you, when you find that, I mean specifically it had to do with a, a, a European daughter. A child. It had not, when I say that, it, I mean that. <laughs> really, what it does, what it did. I'm waiting for it to load up. But um, yeah. the whole see people. It is so imperative that the people 
know, not believe, you got to know that uh, government and anything that the government institute in terms of statute, because they ain't making no law. That's right. Okay, the only law on this land is the American Constitution, and it, and there's case law that says this is the, the American Constitution, 1791 is the supreme law of the land. So now if, if they're calling the American Constitution law, then why are they calling these things that they allege is law statutes? Right, and, right. and oh, charging you with statutes. Right, exactly. The reason that they have these statutes is because the statute is supposed to administer the law. All right? right. Now, who is writing the statute? The statutes are being written by the executive body. If you look in the American Constitution, uh the United States of America, they only have authority to execute the law, but they can't write the law. So statutes is the policy administer the law, but what is the law? The law that the policy is being written for. You mm-hmm. know, much like they say um, Federal Reserve notes is money. No, it's not. Federal Reserve note is an IOU. It is, and this is a matter of law. It, it, these are IOUs waiting, and then you're supposed to be able to replace the IOU with money. It is not the money, but it is used as a means of exchange for money that is supposed to be on reserve. So when you bring these notes to a bank that is affiliated with the Federal Reserve Corporation, they're supposed to give you silver or gold. But let's stop right there because I know I hear a lot of people's minds going. Silver and gold exchange is only for corporation, not for people. That's why this is the land of the free. Land of the free. Everybody is supposed to be able to live freely. But you got corporations within corporations within corporations, and they're all taking dominion over a portion of the land that was once simply a sales territory. And because they are the corporations are calling themselves teaching the people, more like conditioning the people, you're never going to have a seat teach you how he can never rob you again. It's never going to happen. And that's why this uh, Republican form of government being reinstituted or, 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 or that actually, it, it didn't ever go anywhere because the Republican form of government is for the people. It is right. for the people. It is for the people to wake up and take back control of their government. Uh, you have a lot of Moors that believe, oh, it's not our government. Yes, it is. Where do you think the whole premise for the government came from? Exactly. That's not theirs. That's ours. All right? It doesn't mean that we do exactly the same thing, but it does mean that, look, it says that they adopted the government structure. Where do you think they adopted it from? That's why I read the articles of association, if I could just interject, from 1774 to show, you know, to show a little bit about that. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to read because, see, I went into uh, just, you know, online etymology real quickly because I want to read to the people the etymology of the word republic. Now, in yes. Article 4 of the American Constitution, it guarantees a republic form of government. Well, here's the definition of republic. And oh. it states republic states in which supreme power rests in the people. Supreme power rests in the people via elected representatives. All right. Now, now look at the the the, the Latin for republic is republic, and the re. 
is from res, which means a fair matter thing. Then you have pu- publica, which is feminine for pu- publica, which is public. So what this is saying is that the, this is about public affairs. Matriarch. Matriarch, too. This, Matriarch. All right? Exactly. So now when you say that this is a republic, it's supposed to be dealing with public affairs, public affairs that impact who? The people, not corporations. Every time you go into one of these tribunals or courts or whatever, they always speak from the perspective of corporations and employees of corporations. The reason they can get away with doing that is because the people are asleep. There are more people than there are uh, uh, employees of these corporations who are keeping the people, or I should say holding the people hostage. And they do, they hold people hostage not by any physical force because it's more of us than them. They hold the people hostage by fear and mental enslavement. The majority of people will never do anything simply because of mental fear. That's it. And once they put that mental fear in operation, it will go on for generations because you will pass it on to the next child and the next child will pass it on to the next child and the next child will pass it on to the next child. The one that has to break this spell is mother because it is out of mother that the children come. It is also mother who has to wake up and recognize that that child came from one of her ovaries. It did not come from any testicle of a son. And there's women out there who are um, treating the children in 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 a non you know maternal fashion because they really think that that child came from a son's testicle. Therefore, when they injure or keep back or feel like they're not obligated, came from him. That's his responsibility. That's his obligation. Nothing goes like that. Oh, you mean women you have definitely to- know this is just, because I want to say in 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 that respect of. Uh, of uh, international law, because, you know, we're nationals, right? And nature's law, um, the the condition of the child is, 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 is determined by the mother. Now, that's law. That's nature's law. That's that's law. That's, that's it. So that's a fact because, you know, no, because whatever the mother is, there's a lot of scratching. Oh, are you all right? Oh, okay. All my, right. My ear pressure so fell out. You probably heard it falling down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Whatever the mother is, <clears throat> the child is. No diggity, no doubt. No diggity, no doubt. You can't change that. Doesn't matter. That's how it goes. Now, uh, and so that's in law. So her condition. So <clears throat> I would like to say, at least that should be very well understood, is that that child came from her, and therefore she has the authority of govern, governing the child and not any outside institution. That's that's more mm-hmm. um, along the lines. But see what what it happens because it segues us right into this. Um, because what happens is once that occurs and an outside institution has control over um, that child. Um, oh, now I want to talk about passing it on. Um, then what happens? This outside institution grabbed in the fathers after. Now, this is a generational process because you were talking about the mother passes it on, passes it on, passes it on, passes it on. And so we're looking at generations of people being governed by court, by so-called um, uh, uh, state states and family programs of, of such or whatever mm-hmm. like that. And, and, and we're now looking at the awful, ugly results of that. And one of those results was first they had the – Traumatized the the father, the sons, who were the mates, husbands, or whatever uh, of the women, by doing a generational put you in jail and give them Friday because you didn't take care of the mother's child. See, see now you didn't take care of the child that you or the husbandry of that you are, uh, you know, uh, uh, supposedly 
you're the father of the of the child. All right. So since they got that off and over generations, now you see them implementing that another phase. All this shit has phases. So now they're bringing mm-hmm. the this, 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 get cutting the moms out, saying they're not capable and all this stuff. And this is all about relationships between our you and your mate. Our mothers and sons here. So 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 they're taking advantage of that. So this phase now is. The sons that are grown up now, they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to be taken away any given Friday, you know, like I saw my dad or people in the community, you know, where they would take mm-hmm. the tail. But right, so from that phase of the program, now it's all, <coughs> excuse me, rather concrete. So now they've got sons that already know what's going to end up happening. They got sons attempting to raise the child, mothers who are out of their damn mind. It really, it's an illness. Everybody's traumatized, quite frankly. Everybody mm-hmm. is traumatized as far as the family is concerned. And this is this is implemented. This is the phase now. The phase now is so now the sons are taking the children. You got a 19-year-old pushing a, a, a three-month-old in a baby carriage just because of his visitation issue. That, that is sick. That's some sick stuff right there. That is extremely sick. Everybody, everyone knows that that is out of order. And so... Now they know eventually that son's not going to be able to be the mother of a child. He can't be the mother. I mean, come on, all right? That's not that's not the case. I know there's some good, what we call, um, uh, with the moms out there that are nurturers. Don't get me wrong, because there's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm not saying that. But that's all within the structure of your family, not the structure of some outside institution. So now what they have is um, they know that these sons are going to, not, I don't want to even say eventually give up the child or what I want to say is at this point, period, period. If you're dealing with visitation rights, I got them this weekend, you got them that, you are already under the governing authority of someone else who's telling you what your visitation rights are or, or, or like that. So so the, the, they're going to have the son pitted against the mother, the mother pitted against the son. When I say son, I mean father, husband, whatever. Um, so... So this is what we're looking at now. And so we have the son hating the mother. You know, um, Ms. Play or Diana called in on uh, the Sons of Allah show, and they were honoring Tupac, Amaro, right? So there was a song he had, and he he, he said something to the fact that eventually these, the sons, the, the baby that comes from the mother is going to hate the mothers because of this governing authority by, that has been implemented in a wrong mindset as you're saying that, you know, it's they're taking the babies from the mothers, now they're using the sons, traumatizing them with child support bullshit that went on for generations, you know, and now they're coming in for the real crunch because they got the mom traumatized, they got the father traumatized, the son traumatized. They got a place for him called jail. They're building more of those because he's not going to be able to necessarily withstand that, that overseeing because it's all overseeing. It's over-freaking-seeing. That's what it is. And so he's going to latch out naturally, naturally. And so they got a place for him. Now the mothers is all screwed up. Now the passing on thing, that's just a portion of it in the recent phase, but um, the passing on period of this whole idea to really, really dig deep, deep, deep into these things, right, and to find out that this program thing got jacked to do with any of American law. It has nothing to do with the the need to counsel, because we definitely need counseling. There's no doubt about that. But a foreign parent is not is not the one. Now, there's a term, uh, Paris, uh, what's it called, parente, local parente. And I know local uh, in Latin parent is parent crazy. Parent Patrice. Parent Patrice, but it's another one, local parente, I think. But local I don't know. I've got to look into that. But I know local means crazy. So you know what? It's crazy parenting. Because it's not happening for us, so now it's all, it's all from the passing on from one mother to the next child. The mother's thing is to for her child, and so she's traumatized. And now we look at the results of these children that came from the original parent mother a generation ago, let's say or two, um, and they are absolutely mortified. They're absolutely mortified. They have fear in them. They are already truly what a ward of a state is. They they live it. Mm-hmm. And they guide their lives. They like got them on a dossier of they can't even speak for themselves. So 
the thing is, is if they can't speak for themselves, how do they get out of this? Some of them feel like, well, somebody should do it for them. But the problem is, is that no one can. You got to get to the bottom of this thing and get the components of it and rise up yeah. out, of the, out of that yourself. You got nothing to lose because there's a lot of, lot of, um, because they got the control of you and your baby anyway. So break those break those chains, you know, by understanding who's what. Now, we talked to someone who said, listen, all that stuff that they put before they can sign and read to, they don't have to sign none of that. But if you are not aware and you are free of, for, fearful for your baby and keeping your baby, and then, then they tell you, okay, you'll get your baby next month. And then next month they come up with some other stuff or they'll change the caseworker or they'll change the so-called judge, which is really not a judge at all, and then they got then you then they, and they hold you up and hold you up. Why are they doing it? Let me tell you why they're doing it. Because they're making finance. But in the meantime, while they make a finance of what is supposed to be a necessary counseling for the for the for this family for you or your babies, while they're making finance, they're traumatizing you. They're mm-hmm. making you hate yourself for what you think is a failure of taking care of your child or whatever like that, you know, and don't be afraid to ask, don't be afraid to demand those uh, tributes because they're yours, but that's another another part of it. But so that's what's happening. So now they're so traumatizing. They're traumatizing you while they're making money off your baby. This thing that's got to stop. It's not um, right. That's what's it's passed not. on right now. That's what has been passed on. A generation of young girls that are out of order. Out of order. I mean, that are traumatized, therefore out of order. And exactly, and that and that only um, passes down from mother to child. So what happens is they create future generations of revenue generators because the the child, the children of those of of the of of those mothers. They are going to be traumatized for life. They're not going to have any semblance of trust for anyone, and they're going to—they're not going to be able to have a life where, really, where they will be able to, you know, maintain any type of a normal life function because they've been traumatized. It is a matter of record that when you separate a child from its mother and that child does not have that interaction with its mother, it will be traumatized for life. Now, I'm not saying that that's permanent. The person that they hook, they, they, they connect with, whether it's, you know, a maid or a good friend, uh, they they have the ability to overcome that. But it's not, it doesn't always happen, and they count on this. They count on this not always happening because if, if there was a way for the child to, 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 to be back, uh, uh, you know, if their mental psyche could once again be brought back into the family fold, then they wouldn't be able to make revenue generators out of them. Right, right, right. And it's so, sad because... Mm, and they know this, but you know what? They also know that the majority of the people have been so grossly miseducated that they, yeah. that they they are not even going to protect the children, not because they don't want to necessarily, but because they don't really know. And who's going to tell them? The very people that stealing the babies are like, you know, back in the day, where they used to talk about how babies would get stolen and you didn't know where the baby was, or uh, you know, but, you know, this is what is happening. But the, 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 the sad truth of it is this is happening because the people, unfortunately, are asleep. They're asleep. It's just as simple as that. They are asleep and they've got to wake up. This, these, this broadcast that we're doing here, it is such, uh, you know, a cry. It is such a cry to the mothers out there to wake up because you guys, you're the only ones that can change this. Nobody else can change this but you mothers. These modern Europeans, 
They're not going to change it. It's up to you to come in and change it for the sake of yourself and your posterity. That's why this American Constitution was written for us and our, but not just us, because it doesn't exclude the protection to everyone. Everybody is protected, but we got to know. We have got to know the law, and many of us, we don't. Many of our people, they think that, it, oh, you know, it's so cool. I mean, you know, they get into a situation, and oh, you, you, you'll be hearing from my attorney. You know, yeah, right. they think that's the coolest thing since, since whatever, you know, not realizing that they just let the people that they're talking to know they don't know jack shit about law, and the pers- the attorney that they're going to call is probably related to them. They're on the same team. If they're not related to them, they're That's indoctrinated. Right. They're right. They're indoctrinated. They're on that United States of America team. <laughs> yeah, instead exactly. of the America. <laughs> yeah. So they're not, and they're, and unfortunately, they're not going to give up their livelihood, what they think is their livelihood, That's just good. to pull right. your coattail. You so you got yeah. to pull your own coattail, and that's all yeah. there is to it. Really, that's all there is to it. Nobody is going to pull your coattail for you, but you. Nobody. Exactly. And exactly. These people will smile in your face and tell you, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we gonna help you. We gonna help you." But that's not their. That's not the nature of 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 these people. And and unfortunately. Our people is now part of their people. Because there was a state, let's face it, incompetent to yeah. receive any descendancy, whether it be by their incompetence, of lack of uh, being told, whether it be by some contrive. See, that's in the definition um, uh, as well, contrive. That means they contrive something and you got fooled and sucked into that contrive of believing something, you know. It doesn't Mm -hmm. really matter what the reason is that you become um, incompetent. So now if you're not claiming your own honor of your own mothers and fathers, and we're talking about people trying to be your parent, you know what I mean, and the parent of your Mm -hmm. baby, then if you're not doing that, you automatically fall into an extremely – person thereby, uh, subject thereby, a ward of the state. That's why they have different wards. See, see, this is very serious when we look at the cities and stuff like that. They have ward one, ward two, ward three, ward four. You yes. are going right. Yes. <laughs> because, right, because if you are not the average right, then now you have no other choice but to fall into because you're not what they are as far as nationality. They're not even operating from that anyway. They celebrate that. And brought it, you know, or on certain times they they let it be known, like uh, St. Patty's Day, or whatever. Suddenly, these Americans become Irishmen. All right, so so right. they pulled, like you said, they pulled you into their family because you refused to honor your damn own family. So of course you're incompetent, mm-hmm. and you're not, you're not, you're, you're you you cannot. Your inheritance is undescendable. You can't you can't claim it because you're not claiming it. So how in the hell can you claim something that you're not claiming? By your you know, by, by your own confession. Yeah. That's why it you know, every tongue must confess their own and every nation must worship under their own vine victory now. This the 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 uniqueness here is that the modern Europeans they really, you know, they they were the original um, slaves, that's what they were Slavics and, and they don't have they didn't have a place. They were they were the ones who were enslaved. Let's uh, there's a fact now. So, um a known fact now. A highly known fact now. Put it that way. Because it always was a fact. So they so we brought them into the one nation indivisible. That's what this is all about. But you gotta know your side. That's why they have a case law that says, you know, people who or resident in a state are subject to two governments. One is national and the other is state. That is an actual fact and it's in the case law. Now I said it. It's true. But if you we don't know it, then we're understandable because we don't know where to stand. Oh which brings you back to your standing. And what is standing with your relationship to the community. So if you're not claiming your own, you become 
your relationship to the community becomes a ward of the damn state. It's not really complicated. It's all behind not confessing and not honoring your own ancestors, mm-hmm. period, your mother and father, which the uniqueness of that, the uniqueness of that is that they happen to be the mothers and fathers of civilization and civilization principles on the entire planet, all four corners, which is why prescribing and the acceptance of or the an adopted uh, adoption of the the, the 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 national American Constitution is uh, is is what it is because because uh, it is based in excuse me is based in um, civilization principles and governing principles adopt so when you look at government you're talking about really seriously and etymologically. Governing the mental. Come on now, man, this mind. Every child you have is a mind, manifest in the flesh, right? So mm-hmm. how do you get some other other person to govern that? That's why there's an absolute maximum case law. And the maximum is that as society starts with family, that means your babies, you and your babies, so does the authority to govern it. It's not complicated. So if that's the case, how do you allow some foreign government or foreign people govern you and your baby. Now you That's gotta right. take that position. But people don't take that position because they believe because of lack of knowledge that these modern you this is their stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. It, but yet they came over on they came over with slaves and then came over on boats and came over with nothing on no shirt on their back and ignored all of the Aboriginal indigenous people who were of dark melanated skin, admittedly so. Ignored them because look they're talking about their daggone history, which is, for them, they've come a very, very long way. They ain't talking about you. And then every now and then, we come banging on the door, how come you're not talking to tell? Hey, you tell me. Why aren't you talking about, you know, um, uh, 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 a whole a whole host of names we could name. Then they're like, oh, man, we got to talk about that. Okay, let's tell them this, 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 and that, about like Benjamin Banneker Bay, prime example. Um, they want us to talk about their forefathers, some of their ancestors, dad and mother. We we sitting here talking about our stuff. We're proud of how, how far we have come. And they want mm-hmm. us to talk about Benjamin Banneker. Well, yeah, we should be we should be uh, thankful for, for them allowing us to come and all that. But, shoot, we ain't talk about that. We're talking about our conquering of our success. That's all that we're teaching. And here they come wanting us to talk about their people. No. You need to talk about your own people. They're not That's intending right. to do that. So what happens, miseducation, again, oh, you really want us to talk about them? Well, we're going to tell you what we want you to know about them since you're so stupid to not research your damn self. We're going to tell you what we want you to know about them, we, like like Harriet Tubman and her actual uh, Araminta Bay. They ain't going to tell you that that's who she really was. What's called? They're not going to say, say that to you. They're going to tell you what they want. Benjamin Banneker. Okay, you should read, and it's on the site, the letter from Benjamin Banneker to Thomas Jefferson, which was one of the deputed or deputized or plenipotentiaries for them establishing a, uh, uh, the United States of America, which is the colonies. Okay? He was one of the representatives. So you should read the letter from Benjamin Banneker to him. Do they do that in school? No. What more do we need to know? So now you're going to say, well, let's talk. I want you to teach my child about Benjamin Banneker in your school. You know, they're like, okay, we ain't going to tell the truth. <laughs> well, okay, if that's what you want. You see, it's crazy. crazy. We are traumatized. Crazy. And the truth needs no apology, and it doesn't change. Let's check this out. CM Bay rocked it, right? CM Bay, you got to read his stuff. Clock of Destiny, one, two, circle of life, a whole bit, and he's got some other stuff. But look, he told it like it was. Straight, no chaser. Did the best he can. Whenever he said white people, he put it in quotes because that means there's something more to it, or put it in uh, uh, quote marks um, or accent marks. And, um, he he rocked it in me, and you know, it's like truth does not change, nor does it pass away, and it needs no apology. Period. So here we run around like this. We run around like this. 
looking, and we should be looking to learn and, and have people that, that know to share, which is all we do. We ain't, we ain't God. We, we're just sharing. You know, we're finding out things as we go along uh, that are more. Uh, once you have the foundation of the truth of information, then you can build on it. But if you don't have a foundation, well, guess what? You're sitting on false, uh, false, uh, well, false pretense is the same thing. Pretense means false. But I just want to say this. So now we're running around looking for someone to teach, right? Uh, where did you get this truth from? Now, if you read, um, I mean, I can't find it right now. If you read uh, Mysteries of the Brotherhood of the East, right, uh, chapter, I believe it's eight, where, five, five. And he says, he says in there, someone says in there to Yahshua, what they call Jesus, saying, where did you get this truth from? And he basically says, look, truth is always around. Um, let, let me find it because it's a great quote. It's a great, 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 great quote. quote. And uh, I just need to get that. Oh, here, let me just pull it up here. I just want to say this and then we can move on because what we're talking about is truth. Truth does not change. It does not pass away. It does not need any apologies. So what Joshua, for those of you who call him Jesus, which means justice actually, what he said when he was asked, where did you get this truth from? I'm just going to read it because this is a dealing with uh, those who look for other people to teach them or want to know where did you get that information from. He basically is telling you, uh, he's basically telling you the following. Let me see. Chapter 8. Wow, well, I went right to it. No, 5. Chapter 7, 3, 6. Okay. Wait a minute. Maybe it's 4. Let me check. Yeah. Yeah. Yeshua talks with the rabbi of the Ten Commands. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing because you need to read it yourself. Um, but he basically said, he was saying if one is filled with love, he does not need commands of any kind, okay? If one is filled with love, he cannot kill, he cannot falsely testify, he cannot covet, he can do not but honor Allah and man. Now, Rabbi Barakia, which is his prophet, said, your words are seasoned with the sort of wisdom that is from above. Who is the teacher who has opened up this truth to you? And then Yeshua said, I do not know any teacher that has opened up this truth for me. It seems to me the truth was never shut, that it was always open, for truth is one, and it is everywhere. And if we open the windows of our minds, the truth will enter in and make herself at home. For truth, can find, for truth can find her way through any crevice, any window, and any open door. But then the rabbi didn't quite get it. This is, this is us now. Let's put ourselves in place. He says, well, what hand is strong enough to open up the windows? And the doors of our minds so that you can enter in. Now he said, well, how do you open up my mind? <laughs> so check it out. He says, it seems to me that love, now love is the first principle here, right? He says, love, the golden cord that binds all the commands in one, is strong enough to open any human door so that you can enter in and cause the heart to understand. Now, earlier he said, if one is full of love, he doesn't need commands. Now, this is interesting because the commands or the Ten Commandments, you now you need to read up on that. The Ten Commandments was established uh, for the salvation. When you read the beginning, uh, when you begin the beginning of Christianity, chapter uh, forty-six in the chapter seven of the Quran, it tells you the beginning of Christianity, and it basically tells you that uh, the commandments. And this, I just got to put this in because he says, "Love. If you have love, you don't need command." If it's in your heart. That's the first principle. So mm-hmm. then yes, when he says, Look, if you have love, um love which is which binds all these commands because see there's people who need commandments. We know who they were. We we mm-hmm. we watched uh, we watched the uh uh island of Doctor Moreau where it was taking people from animals, it's all about the grafting now. Um they was reading the constitution to to them, maybe not the constitution, but a constitution, you know, constituents and giving them law on how to behave, commandments. Some people needed those commandments, but if you have love in your heart, you already know what's right and oh, wrong. Already. Right. So so in this 
chapter 46, you can clearly understand the beginning of Christianity. It clearly says the foundation of Christianity began in Rome. And I'm, I'm relating Christianity to the Ten Commands, nothing else, because, you know, being Christ-like, crystal clean and pure, that's the Christ way, is the Son. So I'm not putting that down. We've got to qualify everything, but we're talking about the Ten Commands. I'm relating Christianity as it relates to the commandment. That's it, and that's all right here. Because that's really what the foundation of Christianity began in Rome. The Rome, Roman nations founded the first church of whom crucified Jesus of Nazareth for seeking to redeem his people from under the Roman yoke and law. Jesus himself was of true blood of the ancient Canaanites and Moabites and the inhabitants of Africa. Now, seeking to redeem his people in those days from the pressure of the pale skinned nations of Europe, Rome, of Europe, Rome crucified him according to their law. Then Europe had peace for a long time until Muhammad the first came upon the scene and fulfilled the works of Jesus of Nazareth. Now remember, we gotta all probably on all divine prophets. This is what I'm saying. We gotta stop separating this thing. But anyway, then he says the holy teaching of Jesus was to the common people to redeem them from under the great pressure of the hands of the unjust. Now. I just got to add here. I think when Jesus came, Yahshua knew this whole principle here. It's just a principle. But some people say, well, did he really address? No, not as Jesus, because that wasn't his appellation. So um, I think that when he came, he came just, just like Prophet Noble Joel, he said, I am a universal prophet. So to deliver from the hands of the unjust, it wasn't just for his people. It was for anybody, because love is the first principle, right? So he he came to deliver the great pressure of the hands of the unjust, that the rulers and the rich. Now, remember, they're getting rich off of, 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 of proselytizing your child, okay? Would not oppress the poor. Although, let me just say something. They're not really getting rich because that shit ain't really money. That ain't no value. But anyway, uh, this is what they've done. That the rulers and the rich would not oppress the poor. Also, that the lion and the lamb may lay down together, and neither of them would be harmed when morning came. That was the point now. Peace, right? All right. These teachings were not not accepted by the rulers. Neither were they accepted by the rich. Because why? Because they love the principles of the Ten Commandments. Now, that's a powerful statement. Because they wanted to always control the people and tell them what the hell they needed to do and keep them in a suppressed mode. This is what the religion mm-hmm. was for. That's what it's saying when you read this 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 beginning of Christianity chapter forty six. So now through the Ten Commandments, the rulers and the rich live while the poor suffer and die. For the reason I just gave you. Control, right? The lamb is represented as the poor people and the lion, the rulers and the rich. So now didn't he say that the lion and the lamb will lay down together and y'all be healed and nobody will be um, harmed? Okay. The lamb is the poor people, the lion is the rulers and the rich. And through love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, all men are one and equal to seek their own destiny. So you're no longer under the yoke of someone or commandments of someone. And to worship under their own Vine and fig tree, that's where we are today. But first you've got to confess it now and go mm-hmm. after the principles of the holy and divine laws of their who forefathers, not of the family service agency I mean, or any other agency or so-called government entity. And lastly, and this is uh, stanza nine, last, complete, all nations of the earth in these modern days are seeking peace. But there is but one true and divine way that peace may be obtained in these days, and it is through love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice being taught universally to all the nations and all the lands. So, as we said, all four corners of the earth. So, this, you must first, what did he say? And worship under their own vine of victory. After the principles and holy, and holy and divine laws of their forefathers, we got to stop this. We have to absolutely acknowledge our own mothers and fathers. I'm talking about as far as divinity is concerned, whatever you going to call your religion, or whatever. If you're not doing that, it really don't matter, because mm-hmm. the Constitution is written, the American Constitution is written on the principles of divine law, 
a spiritual and divine law. That's the principle. That's why they were adopted by them. So how are we going to do this to keep ourselves um, from being molested? And then don't enforce it ourselves. That is hypocrisy, and that is the problem. And when all of the people do that, now let, let me just say this too. One of the problems we have is that people will go into uh, asserting they're supposedly asserting their national nationality and their freedom or whatever like that, but they lack having enough study to even support that. So they, like, for instance, we just, you know, a, a, a nation as opposed to a subdivision, which is a quasi-national dollar style, blah, blah, blah. If you do that and then you go in and you talk like you live in a state or whatever like that, you just blew it. And so, so much, that's just one example. And so many of our people are doing that today. They're like, wait a minute. I, I think you said it on the Tuesday show or Wednesday show. And it, you said, they're like, dang, go on. We was getting ready to straighten up. And then we found out that these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. Because and they don't go deep through a little bit yeah. and look into it. Because there's a lot of modern Europeans that is claiming their freedom from what? From the corporation. See, let's make the distinction. Everybody needs to claim their nationality, including these modern Europeans, and it's not American yeah. for them. So they're doing it too. So that leaves a lot of that leaves a lot of space and a lot of rope, or I'm sorry, it doesn't leave a lot of rope for them to continue to feed their family, their put food on their plate by extracting uh, 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 and enslaving uh, 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 your family or even some of their own because these modern Europeans, they're not going for it. So that means that they got it smaller and smaller. So who are they going to go after? You, the Aboriginal, Indigenous, more American national. That's who they're going to go after. And so they're grabbing you with this net because they're like, oh, shoot. So they looked into it a little bit. They studied it a little bit, too. They are, some of them already knew. And if you ain't saying the right thing, that means you lack, that means you don't have jurisdiction of yourself which jurisdiction means right words. And they're using that to just rope you. They've always been using it, really, you know. Like when you go into a court and they say, what's your name? You say, my name is. They know they got jurisdiction because the name is assigned um, as a corporate tag and a Christian corporate tag at that. Look it up in Black Law. You know, somebody looked that up and told me uh, another definition, and I, and I sent them the right definition, and they were like floored. I'm like, so you got to really, really study more. You can't be using these unabridged dictionaries. You can't be using these, you know, these modern terms and, and, uh, and usages of words. you got to really get to the bottom of what it is. So it's not just a tag, a corporate tag. It's a Christian corporate tag. How about that? So, so um I said all that to say that the bottom line is we have to confess our own. I don't care what how you look at it, because it's not you become a ward of the state, you become a ward of something, and in this case it's the Union States, period, and they start raping you for uh, your liberties. And that's what's happening with family services. So getting back to the family services, I and mean, I don't know if you found the origin of it, but you might want to get the origin of it so people can understand one thing, that this is how it started dealing with, you know, your, your, your uh, modern your European child and foster homes. So, uh, I mean, dealing with a foster home only, not with the natural people's family. And then it got good to them, and now they started putting your children into the foster home so that they can implement their rule by taking your job. So uh, did you find that? or? Yes, I did. I, I sure did. Um, all right. So, and, and let me just say this. Everybody, you need to find out who the head of that corporation is in, in, within that area slash location. And usually they are sanctioned by a major county, like for New York State, it's under New York City, which, you know, is a corporation. And for like, um, I think, what is what is California? Maybe Los Angeles. Is Los, An- Los Angeles the capital of um, yeah. California? So then it would be under Los Angeles. For like New Jersey, I think it's Trenton. Mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. So these are all the major, because the, wherever the capital is, that is the primary county. All other counties come out of that. So that's what you want to be looking for. The major 
Corporation. Um, so what I was able to find is the name of that particular person, but what I also found was back in, well, you know what, before I get into that, I want to read the history of Child Protective Services. And it mm-hmm. says that the Child Protective Services, this is right in Wikipedia. And I know a lot of people poo-poo Wikipedia, but Wikipedia gives you dates and names. And with those dates and names, you can go and do further investigation. So I wouldn't just throw things away. I would use the information and go research it because much of this stuff is in, like, historical records. With this, I found it under Child Protective Service. And this is what it reads. In 1690, in what is now the Americas, there were criminal court cases involving child abuse. In 1692, states and municipalities identified care for abused and neglected children as the responsibility of local government and private institutions. In 1696, the Kingdom of England first used the legal principle of parent patrie, which gave the royal crown care of charity, infants, idiots, and lunatics returned to the chancery. This principle of parent retreat has been identified as the statutory basis for U.S. governmental intervention in families' child rearing practices. Now, whose child? Whose child are they talking about? Certainly not the Aboriginal Indigenous people. But let's go back and look up this word parent retreat. In your Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, on page 1269, Parent Patrie, father of his country, parent of the country, in England, the king. In the United States, the states, as a sovereign referring to the sovereign power of guardianship over persons under disability. Uh, Mm. Wow. An insane and incompetent person. Right? Now, that's the definition of parent retreat. Now, parent, then what that's telling you is under English law, the parent, I don't care where the child comes from, is the king. Under, uh, uh, what did it say? In the United States, it says, as a sovereign referring to the sovereign power of guardianship over persons under disability, such as minors, an insane and incompetent person. Now, are they talking about the Moors? Now, let me just also interject here. When they use the word in United States, that means United States of America because they say in the United States, the state has a sovereign referring. So they just let you know they're talking about the United States of America. All right? Mm-hmm. So, all right. And then... When they, in, where was it, in the article that I just read, uh, where is it? Oh, out of Child Protective Services, they referenced the word idiot. Oh, yeah. Black's Law Dictionary. Ooh, that's right. Yeah, Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, page 880. A person who has been without understanding from his nativity and whom the law therefore presumes never likely to attain any. That just Read it says, again. You don't know if you know, if you don't have a nationality and you're not likely to embrace your nationality, which means you're gonna mean you're gonna push this Negro colored black African American, you are you are classified as an idiot. Yes. I'm not an E speaking. Black Law Dictionary, page 880, all right? Parent Patrice. Can you, can you read that again, please, idiot? Because people don't believe it. Idiot. Idiot. On Black Law Dictionary, fourth edition, page 880, a person who has been without understanding from his nativity and whom the law therefore presumes never likely to attain any. Now, wow. Prophet Noble Juali came and when? 
1913 to let mm-hmm. everybody know what your nationality is. In 2016, right. we still got more conscious, but especially unconscious, but especially we got these so-called unconscious Moors running around here talking about, well, I know all about the Moors, but I'm not a Moor. I'm going to be Negro-colored or black, or I'm African, or I'm African-American. You just said you're an idiot. In the eyes of the law, you just said you are an idiot. Right. Because you want to embrace that which can never be, you're likely to remain an idiot. idiot. Right. And that makes you undescendable to your inheritance. Exactly. Now, right. um, there's more that can be read regarding this historical reference, but right there, when they read, when they said that word idiot, I was like, wait a minute, I remember Ms. coming on the show, on a previous show, and giving the definition of idiot. Let me go back and pull it out. So now it makes absolute sense. So if you don't want to claim your nationality, you will become, you will become a ward of any state or corporation that finds you abandoned on the land and claims you. And that's right in their statutes. Mm-hmm. Right in mm-hmm. their statutes where they say if you were, um, and I'm going to try and find it while we're on this call, on this broadcast, I'm going to try and find it so that I can read it to you because I remember finding it when we were talking about stat- uh, standing and status years ago. It's one of their statutes where they state, uh, uh, you know, they can claim you as one of theirs if you are found abandoned wandering on the land. What is an idiot? That's right, someone. And you know what? And and, and the idiot is one who has not been acknowledgeable from his nativity. Now, the prophet said, come here to truth about your birthright, okay? So, yes, he's leading you there. And also, in local parenthesis, I-N is three words. That's a position they take. I remember you said that once before in local parentis, but uh, it says in the place of a parent instead of a parent, charged factitiously with a parent's rights, duties, and responsibilities. Now, it didn't say fictitiously. It said factitiously, meaning by facts you are, 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 are incapable, incompetent, is what they're saying, and so, therefore, someone has to be in local parentis in the place of a parent instead of a parent. Yep. Okay. And that's what they're operating with also. And you need to know these terms so that you can utilize them when you're doing your writ um, or stating your facts in writing. You don't have to be no five-page facts in writing, just simple, you know, um, that they have never been given any um, – uh, 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 what's the other word you said, that uh, parentis? Mm-hmm. So they don't have that. Therefore, none of their representatives are in the position of the in local parentage. So you got to know how to put the words together. But I do want to say one other thing while you're looking for that. Um, <clears throat> um, it's cheap. I remember that word coming up all the time. In fact, it's in the it's in the uh, in the proclamations as well. But it's cheat. S cheat. That means out of your state. Cheat. That's really what it means. But. The interesting part about that is what I was saying earlier. It, the definition is an, is an aspect derived of feudal law. Now, just remember the word feudal. Just hold on. Of feudal law, an aspect derived of feudal law that pretends the failing, I mean, the falling back or reversion of land to the lord of the fee upon the failure of the heirs capable of inheritance. So when you don't claim uh, your nationality, your honor, your mothers and fathers, right? Then you are, um, you're in failure. You're incapable of inheritance. And it says incapable of inheritance under the original grant. Now, underline that word original grant too. Um, and I want you to tell them who the original grantor are because none of you more today out here can be the grantor. Your parents, your mm-hmm. forefathers already granted it. So you got some who's right and talking about I'm the original grantor. No, you are not. No, you are not. So then it says the condition where the state makes claim of land or inheritance 
where and whereas the heirs to the said estate or inheritance are by whatever obstruction, incapacity, or incompetence, or any other constized condition, creating or claim to constitute a state of non descendability. Now hold on. Feudal pertains to feuds and fees relating to and growing out of the feudal system or from feudal law having its origin amongst European style of government. Not your government. Not your family. Why are they feudal? Because they don't own you. They don't have an inheritance here. So it has to be feudal, which means, you know, a fight. Uh, well, which means uh, resistance, which means just what it means. <laughs> so they're going to claim your stuff because you're incapable mm-hmm. of claiming your own inheritance under the original grant or grantors, which are your your ancestors. They're like, shoot, if they're not going to claim what their ancestors left, we gonna do it in a feudal uh, in a feudal manner. It's our style. Then that's all that's really happening. So all of that means that you that you know what you just said in local parentage, parentage patre, all of that goes down because you will not, will not honor your own mother. I don't care what condition. See, a lot of people say, "Well, if we do that, well, where's our government? Where's the government building? Where's this government is to govern the mental? All right, you are the government." Mm-hmm. Period. That, like that's a misconstruence of the reality. All right, whether there was a building or not, you still are. So this is what makes like any other, you know, situation obstruction, incapacity, incompetence of understanding that that makes you in fact undescendable. So it doesn't matter the condition that you think we're in because we are in a traumatic mental condition. That's what we've been in from trauma. So it doesn't matter about that. You still are who you are. That's just like with the cards. All right, that's your identification. Now, if you don't know how what that means, you know, you still are who you are, so you claim, but you're incompetent if you or incapable, uh, incompetent, yeah, incompetent, incapable, if you really don't know what it means. That's why that's why I probably said the card of change in your pocket. So, you know, so you've got to study to know. You gotta reach out spiritually to know. You gotta ask and you will receive to know. And you'll get the answer. Even if it seems like it's contrary to what you know, just take that step. Islam. Yes, Islam. So now let me just read some more about this child protective services. I wanna go back to the story that I found on this European daughter. Mary Ellen Wilson. Um, now, and she it says that she was a case of child support that led to the creation of the New York Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. As an eight-year-old, she was severely abused by who? Her foster parents. Oh so wow! Child services is to make sure that the children that was given over to foster care are protected. But like we just said, if you do not claim your nationality, you are considered an idiot and incompetent to care for a child. So you become the foster parent and the child becomes a ward of the state. Yes, the services can step in. It's all based on lack of national standing. Right. But now, now what what you're talking about, that woman, Mary Wilson, and check this out, the reason that she was even in foster care was because the parent was a single parent and she was working and stuff, and and so she, they used foster care just for it was, you know, as a loving, nurturing, you know, assistant. That's not what it's coming to now, so just so, just so you know, and then I guess other people, children would have been in foster care because they lost their both parents or whatever like that. Yep, it says in here. I'm just trying to blow it up a little bit. Um, the uh, in her case, the department of the department placed Mary Ellen under the care of Thomas and Mary McCormick, uh, according to. 
Mary Connolly's uh, court testimony. Let me see if I can get this. Thomas McCormick, Mary Connolly's first husband, claimed to be Mary Ellen Wilson's biological father. The Department of Charity placed Mary Ellen into the McCormick's care illegally without the proper papers or receipts served. Thomas McCormick signed an indenture agreement upon retrieving Mary Ellen from the Department of Charity's care. Did you hear what he just signed? An indenture agreement. That that definitely lets you know they ain't talking about the Aboriginal Indigenous people of this land, but did not explain his or his wife's relationship with the child to Commissioner of Charities and Corrections. Now, that lets you know that if this was his biological child, why would he sign an indentured agreement? Right. Right. Right? Now, the McCormick's were required to report the child's condition annually to the department, but according to Mary Connolly's later court testimony, this only occurred once or twice during Mary Ellen's stay. Now, we know this to be true of these foster so-called foster homes today. Investigation into abuse. Um, the reason I want to read this is because it gets really, really interesting, the final, you know, the, it towards the final story. It lets you know who the hell who is and what is what. After Mary Ellen came into the McCormick's care, Thomas McCormick died. Mary McCormick married Francis Connolly, moving together with Mary Ellen to an apartment on West 41st Street. It was at this address that neighbors first became aware of young Mary Ellen's mistreatment. Her foster mother forced her to do heavy labor, beat her all the time, and locked her in a closet. When the Connollys moved to a new address, one of the concerned neighbors from their 41st Street apartment asked, Anna Agnell Wheeler, a Methodist missionary who worked in the area to check in on the child. Wheeler, under the pretext of asking Miss Connolly to help in caring for Connolly's new neighbor, the chronically ill and homebound Mary Smith, gained access to the Connolly's apartment to see Mary Ellen State for herself. When Miss Wheeler saw evidence of physical abuse, malnourishment, and neglect in Mary Ellen's condition, she was seen barefoot in December, for example. Wheeler began to research legal options to redress the abuse and protect the young girl. After finding the local authorities reluctant to act upon the child cruelty laws currently in place, Wheeler turned to a local advocate for the Animal Humane Movement and the founder of the American (laughs) Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. What? That's a whole wow. So, look, was they talking about the Aboriginal Indigenous people here on this land? No. This is what sponsored the Child Protective Services of today. Who the hell are they talking about? First of all, they ain't talking about the Aboriginal Indigenous people. And secondly, the Child Protective Services is supposed to be for foster people. But if you don't want to declare your nationality, if you want to stand on being Negro, colored, and black, and African, and African-American, you're an idiot, incompetent to take care of the child and you become the foster person. Right. Right. Now, is that lawful? Is that orthodox? I mean, uh, ethical? What is that? Let me tell you what that is. Because the United Nations Convention on uh, Human Trafficking says that that right there, look, any time... Income is being given over to someone for a human life. That's called human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Called human trafficking. 
it's I'm I'm just trying to find the um the um convention in the rights of in I mean, in the um United Nations because I know I had it but uh, I was trying to find it but you know we don't we don't look at human trafficking because we've been mentally conditioned to believe that human trafficking is all about sex and drugs and that's it and mm-hmm. I thought that too. Until one day, I was traveling from the south to the north, and we stopped in this restaurant, me and my sister, and on the back of the door, it says, it it was a poster, and and unfortunately, I don't have it in this phone, but Raj, you might have it hanging up in your office. It said, human trafficking is defined as X, you know, it gave points, but then it said, if your government documents are taken from you, that is considered human trafficking. I was like, what? Yeah. And we called the number. Remember we called the number? We called the number because we didn't write. We didn't believe it was for real. And it was for real. Yeah. Yeah. I still have it in my old phone as a, a national yep. um, human and, trafficking. You know, it's just, look, it's just so much that we have to stand on. Because, look, you got a lot of people who these um, municipal corporations are claiming, which is a, a direct violation of your human rights. Because nobody can come and say, oh, we are claiming you. You have to do what we say, and and we don't need you to sign any contractual obligation. We don't have to tell you the terms and conditions, you know, and you simply find out about these terms and conditions if you're traveling on the land or one of our corporate entities or or, or, or employees come and, and, and do whatever to you. Look. People are alleging to be residents of counties, residents of states. The only way you can never be a resident of a county or a resident of a state because those entities were created for interchange between corporation, flesh and blood beings. All right? And that's number one. Number two, you can never be obligated to be a member of anything without your consent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that goes to territory, that goes to jurisdictional issues, um, personum, territorial, subject matter, territorial, and venue. And just to add, I'm going to reiterate that that, um, case law again, but I just want to interject here. You say you're a national. That means you are your domicile is national. The definition of national domicile. This is one of, some of the most powerful things that we need to know, and it replaces our mindset of I live in New Jersey, I live in New York, I live in California. Okay, this is where it's at, right here. The national domicile, because really you live in your body. You domicile in one of these places. The, na- the, do- the national domicile means the domicile of a person considered as being within the territory of a particular nation and not and not with reference to a particular locality or subdivision of the nation. Now the definition of quasi national domicile. One involving residents in a state. Simple. And municipal domicile is distinguished from national and from quasi national and it has reference in reference to residents in a county, township or municipality. The importance is is that um, all of, with the exception of the national domicile, the quasi-national and the municipal domicile, if you say you domicile there, uh, you ought to, it determines your civil liberties. And that's why your civil liberties are being clipped, because they don't have any to give, really, and because you're, you're cutting yourself off, yourself by your own confession, and saying I'm going under the rules of a state, which... Is in, which their constitution, if they have one, is supposed to be in harmony. But the point is, is that you still are not honoring your uh, national domicile. And this is the importance. Now, 
the case law, I'm going to say it again, to what I just read, national domicile, quasi-national domicile, and then domicile, the people. Now, I, I, let me just say this. I've had this case law for a while, but I didn't quite understand it in the beginning of my studies. <laughs> That's like anyone who's studying, right? And you run and get stuff and you say, oh, shoot, I get that now. The reason you could say I get that now is because after studying it, you understand it clearly, whereas I try not to, and I think none of us try to share something without the full understanding and or the experience of it. And and I have used national domicile in, in, in some of my um, uh, 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 situations, and believe me, it's correct jurisdiction. It, that means it's the right words, and it, and it is a different spin when you do that. Trust me. So the, pe- the, the, the case law here that I have had and then came into through studies, full understanding, and can share that with you because it just gave you the presage to understanding this case law. It says the people of the United States that are resident, and that wouldn't be you, Moore, because you're not resident with any state, but still, that's, that's right. shown you that there's some people who are. So even though they are, the people of the United States resident with any state, they are subject to two governments. One is state and the other is national. So when they don't want to recognize national law, the Constitution is the national and international document, it doesn't matter. They're subject to that because they're resident within any state. They have two governments, the state and the other is national, but there is no need for conflict. And that's United States versus Cruikshank. And that was in 1876. So there you go. It still applies. It's less judicata. Yes. So, and I just want to, um, I want to read something because, oh, my goodness, I just found it, um, and I knew I would. <laughs> <laughs> but we talk about, we look, you know, this, like I said, this right here, the people, People got to wake up. You know, you sons, you've done a great job, but look, mother got to take it from here. I hate to say this. I know you may not want that, but you know what? It ain't about ego. It's about, look, we just got to get this job done. Mother is, it is from mother that everybody comes, and it is from mother to open her damn mouth and speak up. And if she doesn't, nobody can speak up for her. Nobody. And the protocol to prevent, suppress, and punish trafficking in person, especially women and children. Article 3 reads, for the purposes of this protocol, trafficking in person shall mean the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of the threat or use of force or other forms of coercion, of abduction, of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power, or of the position of vulnerability, or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation. Exploitation shall include at a minimum the exploitation of the prostitution of others or other forms of sexual exploitation, forced labor or services, slavery or practices similar to slavery, servitude, or the removal of organs. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Interesting. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to say something else. Um, <laughs> and, C, and C of this same article, it says the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of a child for the purpose of exploitation shall be considered trafficking in persons, even if this does not involve any of the means set forth in subparagraph A of this article. D, child shall mean any person under 18 years of age. Mm. Mm. Wow. Did you find something else? Um, 
<laughs> but this is this is right out of the United Nations protocol on prevent, suppress, and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children. Now, I just want to say, you see why he's saying especially women and children? Because it's all about the mother. Mother, y'all got to be the ones to open your mouth and by whatever means necessary, get back yeah, out to the right. police. <laughs> you the mouth, I mean, uh, El Hodge, uh, El Shav- uh, El, yeah. Okay. Malik Shavad, yeah. Whatever means okay. necessary, take back the family because we, right now what's happening is you got foreigners on American soil that's stealing the people and the baby. And look, look, let me just back it up, okay? Damn animals, man. They're animals. Because here's the thing, what's happening, mother, everybody, if you're not mother or you're not a, a a young female, that has a child, you are a child of mother. Do you hear what I'm, I don't care if you are a son and you are 88 or 100 years old, you are still a child of mother. You And, and see, what did they say? It said mother, especially mother and children. Now, under children, that's her son. And young daughters who have not, or young sisters who are not old enough to defend and take their place amongst the affairs of men. So they're talking about the family. Now, when you see stuff talking about mother and father and child, that's some bull crap. Because on this domain, on this dimension, it's only about the mother and the son, which means it's only about the mother and the child. So the one that's got to open their damn mouth and stop speaking up by any means necessary is mother. And if she doesn't step up to the plate and take control of this situation, these modern Europeans will continue to use us to engage in human trafficking, generating untold credit at our expense and our family's expense. And this is not just limited to the more Moorish family or the Aboriginal Indigenous family of this planet Earth, this is for all mothers and uh, uh, European daughters. This is for every mother that has a child or has a womb. Let's put it like that. If you have a womb and you are and you are mentally competent to take your place, you got to step up because the whole world is waiting for mother to wake up the lesson on the front of the 101. And if you can't get that, well, then guess what? You might as well move out the way and let somebody else take the place because mother is the only one that's going to be able to wake us up and save our babies from this human trafficking and this genocide. Right. But now with that, are you going to be opening up the lines in a moment? Yes. Yes, yes, Okay, so before you do and with that, um, and in honor of quote unquote Father's Day, uh, I want to say this, and we just let it marinate, and no more, no more to do. If we want to give honors to all the um, what we call Chapter Two sons slash fathers, all right, um, on this day, and out of uh, the Circle Seven Holy Quran, I'm not going to read the whole chapter two. You read it, but there's a portion of it that I would like to read, and in honor to all of us. The good, uh, that's all we, we call them, which are good. So it says that who are ordained to lay, uh, I'm sorry, even he said to Mary and Elizabeth, you may esteem yourself thrice blessed for you are chosen mothers of long promised sons who are ordained to lay a solid rock, a sure foundation stone on which the temple of the perfect man shall rest, a temple that shall never be destroyed. We measure time by cycle ages and the gate to every age we deem a milestone in the journey of the race. An age has passed. The gate unto another flies open at the touch of time. This is the preparation age of soul, the kingdom of Emmanuel, of Allah in man. Uh, interjection. Emmanuel. You ever get a manual? That means that this has to be done by you. Every person must be made a priest of, 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 of within themselves. That's what that means. Um, 
and these your sons, and these your sons will be the first to tell the news and to teach the gospel of goodwill to men and peace on earth. A mighty work is there, for carnal men want not the light. They love the dark, and when the light shines in the dark, they comprehend it not. We call these signs the revealers of light, but they must have the light before they can reveal the light. And so you must teach your sons and to set their souls on fire with love and holy zeal and make them conscious of their missions to the sons of men. Teach them that our law and men are one, but that through carnal thought and words and deeds, man tore himself away from our law and debased himself. Teach that the holy breath would make them one again, restoring harmony and peace that not can make them one but love. That Allah so loved the world that he clothed the son in flesh that men may comprehend. So the only Savior of the world is love, and Jesus, son of Mary, came to manifest that love to men. Islam, that's, all we, that's our honor to, to the fathers, son slash fathers, brothers, grandfathers, you know, um, uh, for this day, for every day, but it's particularly for this day of Father's Day. And now if you want to um, go forth with the um, All next right. season. All right. All right. Um, let's see. If you have a question, comment, or concern, press 1 on your telephone, and we will take calls. Caller 412-969. You're live on the air. Please state your appellation at Northwest Maximum. Islam, this is Energy L. Islam, I just appreciate the class today because I know when I was being brought into the knowledge of self, of nationality and birthright, that was actually the very issue that was my first, let's say, sword sharp, uh, metal sharpening metal, uh, having to deal with, you know, uh, foreigners imposing ideologies upon me that internally I didn't feel right, but knowledge base I was, you know, very, very uh, infantile to, but I was on the beginnings of it, but now I'm absolutely clear and I'm so appreciative of that. And I do my part to share that in my day-to-day encounters with mothers, regardless of the age, as well as our sons. I mean, it's to the point... I don't even address, you know, the males as, you know, fathers. and stuff. It's always just son. You know, keeping the science real, we got to get back to that because as you all are keep reiterating, yes, yeah, mainly we got to pay attention to what we're doing. It's, it's us. We are the issue here. You know, mm-hmm. we can't be bad with Europeans running the system that they're running. That's what they're designed to do. They're going to do what they're supposed to do. We can't get mad if we're outside of law. Well, law doesn't apply to those who are outside of law, so color of law has to exist. You don't wish to be in color of law? Well, bring yourself back into your constitutional fold. Declare your nationality to yourself. Then proclaim it to the world and handle your affairs. It's, yeah, it seems so simple to me and it seems so simple to say, but it it really has to be something that's triggered inside the mother, really. It, it, she has to be, something's got to be, aching at her, or something's got to be scratching at her. You know, there's got to be something there. And if there's not, then, yeah, we're going to constantly have this issue because the mother's not waking up. So it seems okay. fast enough, but we're in the Aquarian age, so there's just no stopping it at this point in the game. And those who don't wake up, well, that's just, again, roadkill, casualty to every war, so forth and so on. So, I mean, I'm not real concerned with that. Myself, personally, you know, it does ache the heart. But that's emotions, and I'm not really wrapped up in emotions at this point in the game because, (laughs) you know, emotion has its part, but it's not what fuels what needs to be done. And what needs to be done is to be knowledgeable of self. You know, your higher lower self, when you're out here having these encounters with Europeans or mainly with your family, with your kin, because a European, if you give them the opportunity, you know, they, they know their system is incorrect. So if you come... Correct. There's not much that they can do. I mean, however, it's your own kin that gives you the issue because they're so 
ignorant and arrogant with it, you know, and you're bringing nothing but facts. You're getting emotional. You don't have time to stand here and, you know, hear their loudness because I'm not going to argue with you. I'm utilizing what they can research themselves. So why would I argue with you? I just told you what it is. The rest is up to you. You know, right. I'm grateful to know what I know at this point in time. I'm I'm grateful and I'm honored to be able to deliver the information to the next mother as well as the son. And I've had an, a second encounter, you know, dealing with these so-called uh, uh, agencies to feel that they have some jurisdiction on, you know, offspring. No, nah, nah, who are you? Why are you even over here? I know. I need to see some ID. I need to see some business cards. No, you don't have a delegation of authority order. You don't even need to be talking to me right now. You're assaulting me. So, I mean, you really need to think about what you're doing right now. This is how I can come at any situation that I have to encounter because I've taken the time to study. As I'm doing right now, I was putting together our natal charts, not only for myself, but for my children, my mother, my uh, lover at this time, just because that's that's, you know, something we're supposed to have in our existence, but we're so far removed from what's important, and we're so distracted by what was told to us that's important, and, yeah, we're buying the Kool-Aid, we're making the Kool-Aid, and we're passing it around, and, <laughs> yeah, we got to stop that, Mommy, you got to stop well, that. You know, you know. something you said when you said, look, this is how I talk to them. No, you don't have you don't have that authority. See, you can do that. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyone can do that if they have knowledge. And like you said, and I really appreciate it, that it's once once you assert that, it's a done deal. There's no hard claim to that. And that's what the problem is with a lot of the young uh, sisters today who are generational um, results of previous uh, uh, mothers and, and their so parents. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the knowledge to set forth. So then the 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 the, the institutions and the representatives of councils will will actually use a threat. We're going to do this and we're going to do. But if they had knowledge, they would know that they can't do that. But the the problem is not a lack of that knowledge. And once it is applied, you do get a favorable reply. And mm-hmm. also, what you said is in also constant with what was said earlier by Anna E. The truth of the matter is that uh, any son was born a mother's son and will die a mother's son. So with that being said, um, you know, uh, we get, again, we give honor to that, but that's what it is. Ma and son, that's mm-hmm. it. That's so it. That's it. it that's the son it. becomes a father. The son becomes a husband. The son becomes, you know, a brother, whatever like that. But that's what he was. He was from a mother's son who was yeah, born. Keep, the science, son who keep the science focused. Keep the science focused. If we keep, yeah. you know what I'm saying? First of all, like you said, acquire the, acquire the knowledge of the science and just keep the science focused. I know what we've been told for a little while, and it's all really just for a little while because once a person starts to study, be it female, be it male, if you start to study, it's there. That's why yeah. when it comes down to handling my affairs out here and having to encounter Europeans, they're not as hot, you know, sleepy moors who are still calling themselves by different labels. But I also mm-hmm. find that when I do encounter our sisters and brothers, our sons, and our, you know, kin sisters and mothers, as far as the elder women go, I still get a favorable remark once they get past their emotions of holding yeah. on to their old beliefs by somebody. You know, that was told to you. Did you even look to see if that's really what it said? That right. person gave you their interpretation. You need to go in and get your interpretation. Your Kasha record ain't going to steer you incorrect. It's already but in you. You just have to, you know. Thing. That's another thing. I don't want to cut you, but I wanted to comment on what you just said about um, you, you find the trouble with our own. And another thing yeah. that we need to be very, very cognizant of in these days of this falling and this changing is that they are now putting Asiatics, more conscious or unconscious, in these mostly con- unconscious. Um, like you said, they didn't even look and see what they're trying to implement upon people. Um, they're putting them in those positions to be yep. the, the interface with their own people, and they mm-hmm. are the worst. And then you know that you can't get into no you can't get into no sword fight with them because you know we the best fighters right by word or by sword right, so they're doing it purposely so Mm -hmm. that it'll be them that takes the fall and now you got to make your own 
take the damn fall. You see, we got to understand that game that they're doing. Hey, um, casualty mm-hmm. every war. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> casualty every war. If you haven't had a conversation with me in all honesty, and you still insist on acting like you don't know or acting like a prick, we just going to call it what it is, then whatever befalls you befalls you because it's not me you're dealing with. And, yeah, it's the nation that you're dealing with, but you're actually dealing with karmic debt. You know, if you really wish to go this route with me. Yeah. The next person you encounter may not bring it this way. They might be still asleep. They might have got some more information trying to run with it, really haven't studied it. You could tell that person, but, sweetheart, you, you know I'm coming from the, you know, the absolute correct place. We, we need to stop right here. Drop your attitude. Bring that tone down some. We could start over. What you say your name is again? Kimberly? Okay, Kimberly, look. You know, and, and just go with it. You know, but if they 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 show resistance, hey, I said my piece, and we're going to let these chips fall the way they fall. If you wind up getting sued, then that's on you. If you wind up getting in prison, that's on you because you're breaking international law here. It's mm-hmm. that simple. We're not dealing with statutes and codes. I'm not a corporation. That don't apply. I don't agree to it. I'm not about it. So, you know, where we where we at now? Yeah, get your supervisor on the scene. They should know mm-hmm. better. Who trained you, <laughs> you know? But I'm just appreciative, you know, of knowing the information of Most High Allah bringing, you know, the information to our son, Noble Dua Ali, the Noble Prophet, you know, that great teacher there. And that's what upsets me because it, it's like, wow, are you serious? You can uphold Elijah Muhammad. You can uphold Melika York L. <laughs> you know, they always drop that L part. I don't get that. You know, you can uphold these people. But yet, the one, the one who actually brought you the key to release you, these individuals are still keeping you in a cycle of servitude to them in all reality because you're mm-hmm. holding on to a religion, which you think is religion, but it's actually dogma. And I appreciate Taj pointing out and dogma, and most of us populists have never received religion, and we uphold dogma as religion. And then when we start to study a little bit, we get all upset and we all, well, I don't deal with no religion. Well, you ain't never had religion, so you can't say you don't deal with religion, which in reality right. you, know you haven't. But when you learn <laughs> what it is, then that's all you can deal with. You know, you're right. just basically using cosmolic, cosmological sciences to just navigate in this physical plane that you're in. This is an experience. This is an experiment. You know, don't get it twisted, but see, once we get here, we get all this other stuff, you know, the emotions, all the all, all the little, you know, schools that we got to go through, you know. We, we experience in it, but I, I see that I'm not having the, too much of the issue with the European. The system is set up the way the system is. You got to deal with the light company the way you deal with the light company. They don't have no way of collecting silver from you. You know, I've already been down to the sewage company recently, to the water company, because my mother acquired a home or whatever, whatever, and... The water company will turn off your water if the sewage isn't completely satisfied. Well, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to set aside. Here's, you know, a silver coin. Let me set aside the debt. Well, we can't accept that. Well, what do you need? Well, we need money. Well, here you go. It is money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we can't, we can't, look, we can't accept that. We have to, you have to give us, you know, money. What's money? What are you talking about? I am trying to give you money. No, we need, you know, money. You got a credit card? No, I don't, I don't know what that is. You know, of course, they're going to look at you crazy because, like, credit card, you don't know what a credit card is? No, I don't know what that is. I don't. She goes, well, you know, do um, you got a dollar? Well, what's a dollar? You know? Oh, you talking about a Federal Reserve? <laughs> no, no. A dollar. Oh, you talking about that Federal Reserve? No. Oh, sweetie, that's a debt instrument. The last time I checked, you can't pay a debt with a debt. That's illegal. Like, guess what? Right. I'm unlawful. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You can't right. pay a debt with a debt. See, but now. But, but well, another you don't thing, have you a debt. Now, I do not. I don't have a debt. But listen, sister, you need to look up dollar because it's a coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's why I said. That's what I said earlier. Well, what is a dollar? Because yeah. you're, not, you're not clear on what a dollar is. I'm clear on what a dollar is, and that's why I come back with, oh, oh, oh. You're talking about the Federal Reserve note. Well, that's a debt instrument. No, I don't really. You know, I know that a debt instrument can't pay a debt. That don't make sense, and that's not legal. But you know, and it's uh, truly not lawful. So you know, I got money. I can give you this. Or are you going to be able to give me the exact change back, though? That's my question because I'm not going to accept the Federal Reserve. I've had this conversation recently, seriously. You know, and in reality, at this point in the game, it's just a comedic show for me. Now that I'm, now that I'm clear, just because you got a wasteful of mass destruction on the McDonald's uniform, 
I'm not afraid of you. You're basically a pink bunny with a water gun. Because taking, so-called taking my life, you're not actually taking my life. You're releasing me from this vessel. Well, you know, so therefore there's no fear in me. And that's that's your biggest tool, or that's the system's biggest tool, yes. fear. And when you say putting yep. us in position, that's the old system of the Willie Lynch. you got to have your overseers, and when your overseers look like you, you're a little more or less to resist. you got your so-called leader guys, you know, and blah, blah, blah. They know the truth. If they've done all the studying, then you know what's real, and you know nationality is the business to order the conversation of the day. But it's unfortunate in our homes. We're not having these conversations. We're talking about what we're going to do for the 4th of July cookout. Are we getting together oh for, you know what I'm saying, these different holidays? And, you know, we're, we're so sad. Oh, did you get straight A's in, you know, public school? And, you know, oh, you're, you know, I'm saving so my child can go to college. We, we're so sidetracked on things that, oh, my goodness, you need to stop playing with life. You know, does your child even know what their sign is? and the importance of, you know, how the planets work in them, how they are manifestation of the planets in just the vessel there. And, you know, these kind of conversations we're not having, and when you're attempting to have them with your people, for the, for the most part, they're looking at you like, oh, you're she again. And it's like, yeah. okay, but you playing right. Nicki Minaj, Waka Flocka, talking about what they did on Tony Braxton or whatever reality shows on TV today. You're talking about that stuff, and I'm like, oh, here they go again. I put on my earbuds and listen to Saw Rock. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I hope you all coming down with Coot. Well, I don't know. He just probably traveled yeah, this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we, we're going to see you real soon. Looking forward to it. Well, we're having the time? cookout. We moved our spouse's cookout to the 25th so we can accommodate, actually, on the 25th. From after the um, the uh, lecture from 1 to 5, we placed it from 6 until up there at the homestead that mom was able to acquire. So, yeah, I, I was hoping. I hadn't heard back from Cujo. I had left him a message through YouTube and also at his email, but I hadn't heard back from him, so I wasn't sure. But, we're, you know, we're still doing it regardless, all vegan, of course, plant-based uh, cuisine. But there will be some well, fried fish and some grilled you, fish, you know, and just, just good, you know, just well, up there with your kids for a grassy family reunion. Listen, that sounds wonderful. Like, um have you heard from uh, Ms.? We, we're going to get back in touch with you. We would love to attend that. Oh, yes, definitely. I'm grateful to hear that because, I mean, I'm trying to make sure I make enough for those who have said that they would attend. This and other. I know we're in a location that's kind of difficult for some to get to, uh, given the bus service but we'll and everything. Talk, we'll talk about that later. Um, uh, uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, yo, yeah, well, count, I look forward to count us in, girls. <laughs> well, wait a minute, Definitely. but this is after the lecture on. Uh, yes, it's song. after the lecture because I'm gonna be at the lecture. Trust and believe, most likely front and center. Well, that's how I've always done since the beginning of my lecture from way back in the day with Neely Fuller Jr. United listen, Independent Compensatory Code System concept. <laughs> yeah, I remember talking to you uh, when you mm-hmm. first came into. I don't know if you remember that you called our. Oh yes. And, oh yes. Oh okay. yes. Yes. I remember, I remember all my encounters with you all, and I never felt slighted. I didn't get a call back or a response or nothing because you're busy. There's not enough of us yeah. doing the work. I understand that. I ain't get emotional like oh, they full of a day and even trying to. Ain't nobody, yeah, they're helping. They put that whole website up for free. Yeah. The university, well, go there and do it. <laughs> <It's so funny>. you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's that. right there. But when you because got questions. <laughs> it's funny you just say that Y'all because for us. I put, like say, we put up the directions or instructions mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. proclamations and the cards, and then somebody will get upset because I won't give them a phone call. Or whatever. Then when I do call them, the questions that they ask is right on the site. Mm. Or some mm. of them, they'll email and I'll say, well, what is your question? Because I'll always usually answer email. I know I do, Miss says we, we do that because we could do that any time. It be 2 o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. we might do that. And then I'll say, okay, here's where you'll find the instructions. I might even give them the link. Boom, go straight to it. They still want me mm-hmm. to talk on the phone to tell them what the link just said. Did you, go re- did you read what I sent you? Oh, no, I didn't get to read that yet. What do you mean lazy. to read that? That was the answer to your question. That's lazy. Now, if you read okay. that and then you can't, like some people can't read, you know, like we got to take, take that into account. But this aside from that, if you, can, if you can send the email and type a message, you can read, right? So if I give you the place to go to get the answers you want, why do I now have to talk to you on the phone to tell you exactly what I just sent you to that gives you the answer? 
They want you to do it for them. I know these people. That's why I refuse to do that whole, you know, gathering of. I mean, I I, I know I'm I'm destined to do it. This is true. It's just that I see, you know, I see the masses for what they are, and a lot, yeah, they're just, you know, sheep are waiting to be led to the slaughter. And I am not going to be that, you know, roadmap to a slaughter. I'm unable to do that. And what I'm telling you, you're not hearing me. So, look, what, is, what you know, what are we doing here? So I refuse to put myself out there just yet. But going through my natal chart, it's an absolute. I'm already, you know, it's, I'm on it. Well, listen, let me you say know, this. And I don't take it lightly. I, that's one thing. I'm, I don't take it lightly. And a lot of people's emotions are just so fragile that they take it personal. And it's not. it ain't got nothing to do with that. This is just information that that's supposed to help you or that can possibly help you navigate a lot more convenient. You know, remember who you are. That's why I go by energy. My mother named me Dion, but my mother energy. I've been energy for the last 16 years. I was energy before I knew anything about my nationality and birthright. But see, that was the most high tapping into me and allowing me to remember. And therefore, I can see that the vibratory energy that I put out is what I'm going to get back, and I always desire to know the truth. No matter where it led me, I just desired to know. So Christianity didn't take a hold, but yet I learned a lot about Christianity. The fact that that meant European, oh, my goodness, how can I look at any brown person who claims to be a Christian what a straight face without laughing. It's just, hmm. Right. I'm not well, fucking funny, this. but it is funny to me. Well, uh, we're going to contact you. We're going to probably contact you mm-hmm. afterwards, and we'll have that discussion and get all that information because mm-hmm. we'll probably come up a day before anyway. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful because I know there were some sites that Niz was trying to see, and I'm mobile, and I'm willing to, you know, play tour guide, and you all can show me some stuff about the area to which I was born <laughs> into and don't know right, much we about myself. <laughs> we were, yeah, we were there before. We, we were there before and found some, didn't get to cover everything, but got Niz gathered some really great stuff right there in Pittsburgh. I'm telling you. So, yeah, I'm sure I that know, that's going to be a problem. I, I didn't get the chance to get it all. But there's definitely, and they not get it all, all, but there's definitely some more. So uh, we'll keep what we'll out do, to me. We'll, we'll call you. We'll call you after the show. Um, okay. And, and arrange that stuff. Thank you for all of your um, sharing of oh, information, indeed. and I'm looking forward to meeting you in the flesh. Indeed, indeed. Islam, peace. Islam, peace. Islam. Peace. Islam. Alrighty. Well, um, we are. Well, okay, we'll take one more call, but we will have to end this broadcast after this caller. Oh, oh, Jesus, maybe. All right. Uh, first of all, let's see. I believe is that you, Sister um, Carol? Yes, it is. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I need to share something. <laughs> You got to hate peace, sister. I tell you, I I have to um, camel back on Sister Energy. I love listening to her because she definitely gives off a lot of energy. And she touched on so many things that's um, so real. Um, uh, I've traveled back to home, and uh, and, uh, it's been interesting. But I tell you, the show today, it's so true. I mean, you're so right about mother. Obviously, I'm a grandmother now, so I'm, I talk to my daughter, I talk to the grandchildren, but uh, like, and I'm a cancer, so I know Sister, Sister Energy didn't mention her uh, her sign, but I'm a cancer, so I carry, and, and Raj, because of you and Sister Anna L., you helped me a lot because I have two waters. I, my moon is a cancer, okay, my sun is a cancer, and my rising is a cancer, <laughs> but then I have a Leo. Um, what? Moon Wait a minute, cancer. stop. To hold the bus, mother of cancer, uh-huh. mother of nurturing, sensitive, uh-huh. uh, controlling, um, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> did you say, did you say that you are a cancer sun, moon, and rising? No. No, my, my, mm-hmm. my rising, I'm sorry, my rising is Leo. My moon is cancer, and my, my, um, uh, uh, your son is cancer. My, my son is cancer. Oh, okay. oh, 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 all right. So, so, so the rising fire that you have, the Leo, which is also uh, uh, teaching, and children um, are already um, mm-hmm. automatically attracted to to that magnetic energy. But, the, but that Leo fire, which is what you rise, gets 
tempered by the cancer water, but you know that already, and you know how to navigate with that. However, cancer, oh, you are a mother for real. You are, oh, wow, moon yes. and sun. That so means you can reflect on yourself and make your own changes whenever your sun and moon is in the same place, man. That means mm-hmm. that you can, yeah, so. Wow. That's, that's, why, that's why I find myself a, so much uh, drawn to the uh, younger people and um, and just testing this information on them. And uh, I, I just stand up. But I, I don't care who they are. The so-called thing that I call them, our, I call them our young warriors. I said, all you need is the right information. You learn about your nationalities and become the protectors that you truly are. Uh, you know, but uh, I, I'm, I'm back now, and I, I just wanted to share with you um, my traveling back. With my and with my nationality identification, no problem, no problem. Everything, everyone was so pleasant because on the um, plane, oh, you came back by uh, airplane? Oh, flying. I, I flew because I okay. didn't want to travel all that. And it was, I tell you, and and when we when we do wear them feathers in, in public, I, I, you get so much reaction from people. And I had a brother come up to me. He started talking Arabic, and I apologized. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't speak. I said, I'm here, American. And uh, he says, ah, I'm from Morocco, you know, quit the kingdom. I said, oh, welcome, brother, welcome. And he was so happy. I told him, he said, I said, yes, we're waking up. It's only a matter of time before we take our rightful place and, you know, we know who we are and, and, and the world is put back in order. But he was so happy. I mean, this man was tripping over himself to, to do any and everything he could for me. And even the um, TSA <laughs> security people, you should have a few of them, especially the melanated sisters. They, they wanted in for more information on our nationality, so I gave them obviously RV RV based sites. But it was very interesting and very pleasant. It could have been from those rips that I sent off to everyone when I had a problem in that mm-hmm. Philly corporation. But the trip back uh, near New Jersey corporation, it was so pleasant, no problem. So they didn't give you no problem on your on your trip back, huh? Not at all. Not and I and I truly felt that it had a lot to do with the um the rips that I uh sent to everyone and then some. <laughs> did you send did you yeah. send rips to them before you traveled or, or in as a result of your last travel when they weren't too kind, you sent rips to them? Well I had sent the no, no, because I had no problem traveling when I first left this left and, and traveled to uh, the southern area. I had no problem, but uh, for some reason, I don't know, the Philly Corporation, the, the uh, employees, they gave us a hard time. So that's when I, I put them all on blast. And, um, and uh, you know, because they claimed that uh, they weren't familiar, I said, well, that's not my problem. And when they're looking at the computer to try to get an information, I said, what kind of information would you get from me in the computer? I said, why would I be in your computer? But uh, anyway, uh, I told them, I said, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Are mm-hmm. you saying that they said that you were not in the computer or that you were? I was what? The, are you saying I, that they said you were not in the computer or that you were yeah, in the computer? I, I, want, I wasn't in the computer. And I asked them, why not. would I be in the computer? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I asked them, so why would I be? But the funniest part, when he said that my nationality didn't have an expiration date, I, I had to chuckle at that. But, I, you know, I was pleasant the whole time, kept my... Uh, <laughs> I said, nationality doesn't inspire. <laughs> Go, girl. So, uh, you know, it, that was really interesting. And even here, back back here with mom and what have you, it, and I have to agree with sister energy, your family, your loved ones, boy, they give you the hardest, the hardest that I have. But I, I know who I am. I stand by it. And nothing will deter me, nothing. So I even said to my mom, I said, Mom, you keep asking about the organist. I said, would you like to read about Noble Burali? I said, he brought this to you when you were, before you were born. So she says to me, she says, you know, Carol, I remember when I was little, we used to say mooshes, mooshes, something like mooshes. She said, she used to hear that. I said, Mom, maybe you misunderstood it since you were a young child. But she said it was something like mooshes, you know, a mooshes community. I said, it probably was more and you just mispronounced it. And I said, but I'm sure Grandma knew, but, you know, because of the fear. And, and I said, people who betrayed us, as we do in our own family, as you can see, the information wasn't given to us correctly. So it's been really interesting. And um, right now I'm, I'm uh, fighting a few, a, a battle, because like Sister Anna Elsa, you can only do one at a time. But um, I'm sitting in my son's um, uh 
automobile and this policy enforcer pulls up behind me. I didn't pay any mind. I'm just sitting there on the phone talking. And uh, so she sits there for a few minutes and what happens? Then she leaves. I see a few minutes later she goes around the corner and comes back. So this time I make eye contact with her and I smile. And she just pulled off, you know. I said, boy, it's just funny. And she's a young, melanated sister. And like um, Sister Energy, and you said, uh, they put so many of us now in these positions. So I have to come at them with a whole different strategy now, you know, than I would the, uh, the modern Europeans who have to use such a different strategy when we're dealing with our own people because they're just they're, uh, not aware of what's going on and who's who. So that's one thing I have to do to 100% I see, especially in this small little area here. It's, it's, it's the majority of, of the people that's in these um, corporations are us. And, boy, and they say they're really riding the people. They really, really are. I like to shake my head because nobody wants any information. Nobody wants to know. Nobody wants to do anything. And I said, that's all right. I'm going to do what I have to do. So I just wanted to share that with you all. And it's so good to hear your voice. And it's good to be closer to home. Well, on your way back um, on the plane, using the mm-hmm. card and everything, you, you said they treated you very kindly. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't give you any hassles or whatever, or what? It really, it's not a hassle. It, it, I think what you're demonstrating is that it's how you answer the question. The question is there, the answer is yours. And mm-hmm. it's how you answer the question, like you said, they said, "Well, we don't have to be in a computer." And you're like, "Well, why would I be in a computer?" You know, yeah. like, okay, so, so did you? Then you went through their whole procedure, uh, and they let you go right through. And, and you, you and, and know, what was the, interesting. I had the decree, you know, when you call and you do the pre-scheduling and what have you, so I did all that, and I happened to be in the wrong location. So when someone came up to me, I got this sort of paperwork in my hand, and he said, oh, you're in the wrong, you got to pre you in pre pre book there. Can you can okay. crack off the mic a little bit because you're a little okay. more okay. okay. Let me just... Right. Pre, I, I had already pre-booked the uh, flight, so I, obviously I was in the wrong location. So someone saw my, um, one of the employees saw my paperwork. She said, oh, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong area. And I mean, this line was like around the corner. So I, she directed me to the uh, correct place. I went around the corner, and it was hardly anyone there. You know, I did not have to open my suitcase. I had my computer in there. I didn't have to take my shoes off. And none of that. Wow. None of that. And I had my... Um, my unk on, and I forgot to remove that or put it to the back, so when I went through, it went off. So he just won, and no problem. She said, oh, well, next time, just take your, your jewelry and put it towards the back, and, and the machine won't go off. So it was felt a little strange, but at the same time, I said, hmm, obviously these people must have gotten, you know, a message from the top well, down. Because, yes, come on. because we found out, and you know, um, that we know that they are not the driver's license instrument as identification on flights anymore. You know, that's a process that they got to go through. Um, and you know, I think that was uh, not too long ago we we read that, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, because it's different. And it's funny because they don't want asking for drivers. Drivers, like, you know what they asked for? Identification. They did not mention anything in Pacific, especially a driver's license. Uh-huh. I recall that. <laughs> right, 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 because... Because um, that ha- that is um, th- they got to stop using it. It's been a process really for a while, but you know they're coming down on them because it, it, the truth is it's not an identification. That daggone thing is a uh, 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 instrument for those who are doing commerce. It doesn't have nationality on it. And I, I wanted to bring out what you said about the uh, the expiration. It has an expiration, so it is not identification. Because I've had some people say, well, could you put an expiration date? No, we are not putting an expiration date on nationality cards because your nationality doesn't expire. You know, like, it, you can't have an expiration date. You know, like, and some people do that just so they can make more finance or whatever like that. But in, in law or in identification, as what an identification is, there's never uh, to have an expiration. Something that is issued corporations has expiration. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And that's just mm-hmm. further proof um, regarding that driver's license instrument. That it's not a, I mean, that and the fact that it doesn't say what your national, uh, anything about your national domicile or your nationality. So it doesn't determine it. Now, if they were to start making that uh, 
a true identification card, everybody would have to do what? Confess their nationality, including them. I guess they'd have to put Irish on there, huh? But at the same time, if you're Irish, then you should have a identification from your Irish nation saying you're Irish. There shouldn't be a problem. I mean, that's really where it should come from. You know, because a lot of people, they'll say, well, where did you get this card? From my national family. That's where I got it. Period. If you understand what identification is. And also, um, you know, they'll say, well, is this a government card? Absolutely it is. You don't have to sit there and explain to them. Just the question is there. The answer is sure. Is it a state? Well, not a, you would say, yeah, the Morris Nation state, but it's not a corporate union state card. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Mm-hmm. So, so it's kind of interesting that these things are now becoming of high consciousness of the people, and it changes it. Uh, as you said, it even changes the manner in which you effectuate your life works and your um, and your uh, private affairs. And so what you were telling her is that I'm private. Why would I be in your computer? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so now, listen, I know you got to get acclimated as you're back on this end, but we are looking forward to um, seeing you at some point, and I, I know you get some stuff done. Now, uh, mm-hmm. another thing that you said that I that I wasn't real clear on about this conveyance. Did you say that it was a policy and for a female a private? Yes, she was. Uh, mm-hmm. She just pulled out of my uh, son's uh, conveyance, and um, she just pulled up behind me. I'm just sitting there on the phone talking. I wasn't, you know, navigating anything. Just sitting. Talking. She was there for a few minutes, and I don't like this. I know she was trying to get my attention. She didn't, because I continued my conversation. And then that's the Oh, so you told. ignored? I just totally ignored. Yeah. I was on the phone. <laughs> just told her. I didn't I look hear in the I, 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 I know it was a she because when she left and then went around the corner and came back, I'm still sitting there. Talking. She came back oh. and then she went by me. I eyed her. We eyed the eye, and I smiled at her. And she continued traveling in her direction. So and left you she alone. was a young melanated sister. Wow, they're just out there stalking. With yeah. they're stalking, they're stalking. Um, yeah. Oh shoot, I'm not even. Uh, so true, thing. so true. Because I I can't even fathom what was that all about. And if she expected a reaction from me, hmm, as far as I, she was invisible, as far as I'm concerned. But since she did come back and she wanted me to acknowledge, I did. I looked right at her and smiled, and I kept my continued my conversation. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly. interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, is there anything else you want to share? Because I have to. We're going to be closing out, but I did not go nope. into nope. the studio. So it's going to take me a minute to get in there. Oh, no, 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 no. that's all. Yeah, that's all right. I can take one more call, and then we're going to have to close oh, out. Right. Okay, okay, I just good. got a question for you, Annie. The, what we were talking about, where they're not accepting the IDs. Uh, I mean, driver's license instruments as IDs uh, for planes and other things. That is something that we just recently had read, right? Yes, it is. And the other thing, Mm -hmm. and and, you know, because because this is a constitutional issue, because here's the thing, why would you need identification to, if if you are standing right there? Because here's the Mm -hmm. thing, what's happening is you have a corporation making a presumption that you are some sort of thief or criminal or crook and need to be identified. Right. And that is right. a con- that's a, that's an issue uh, of law, and and it's a violation of the constitutional rights of the people, especially by a corporation that that that's there to provide a service. You're not mm-hmm. there to harass the people. You're there to provide a service, and your service can't be attached to somebody else's policy that involves harassing and stalking the people. Mm-hmm. Because now you're talking about, right, you're talking about disclosure, an issue of disclosure, and you're also talking about an issue with law because what you're saying is somehow you were given judicial authority to harass and stalk the people in their private capacity, and that law needs to be produced, not a statute, because a statute Mm -hmm. simply administers the law. We want to know what the law is. Right, which they never show. Because they don't right. have it. They can't. Because on this land, the only law there is is the supreme law of the land, the American Constitution. And they try to, to just forget about it all the time. Meanwhile, they, they say, well, we have to know to the American Constitution. Well, then why are you trying to push a statute on me? 
Right. So what's happening is then in the past we've never questioned it and they've gone with it. Now right. it's different. To, exactly. Because we saw exactly. it was everybody. Yeah. Everybody okay. gets to put these, these these people in their place. If they're an employee of a corporation, I don't care if it's a state, a municipality, a federal, or a so-called private corporation, which there are no such things as private corporations. All corporations are simply corporations in one form or, or another. But if they are an employee of a corporation, they need to produce the law. And that law has to be in harmony with the American Constitution. And mm-hmm. we can't produce mm-hmm. that alleging that that is law and that is the basis of their actions because what you just did is you just violated the American Constitution, which you allege to have taken an oath to uphold even as a subcontractor. That's like these people who are subcontractors or contractors administering a federal or even a state program, they fall under the um, – they fall under the uh, oath of the state and the feds as well as their um, bond. Just like if you was, for example, a nurse, um, and, and people might not know this, but um, if you're uh, uh, in nursing school and you come into a hospital and you're, you're practicing on these people, you fall under the license of the nurse they pair you up with as well as her malpractice insurance as well as the hospital malpractice insurance. So don't tell me that you're not bound to the Constitution just because you're out here administering a, a federal or state program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. So when the people get to know this, when we effectuate it and enforce the law ourselves, we are, we'll be in better shape. And, and lastly, too, like you said, um, uh, this is like the last ground for them to take people um, because everywhere else around the four corners of the earth, they're kicking their behind out. Pop, yep. Pop. They're kicking this them is out. The last thing because we're, yeah. so, we're so, you know, we haven't woke up enough. We haven't. We don't have enough sisters that has woke up, and that's why you get all these sons running around trying to fight with everybody because that's what sons do. Sons want to fight. They need direction. And But if mother is asleep, they're not going to get the direction, and this is why we need mother to wake up so that mother can take her place and start directing the flow of activity. So with that, we got our last caller, Sister Gianna. All right. Yeah. <laughs> peace and love. Peace and love. Um, peace and love. So um, I really um, wanted to speak on exactly what you guys are talking about right now. This is the last, this is the last stand for them. Especially um, the corporations, because what's really happening is this: that they are slowly moving into the constitutional for the government again, whether they want to or not. They're being forced to. And from um, doing the research on the driver's program or the uh, driver's licensing program, the the real reason to me, this is just me from analyzing. So this is not this is just coming from my mouth. Um, I believe that they stopped letting people use the driver's license as a form of identification is because, well, we know that it really never was an identification. But what I really know now is it really it really was an employee card. So, for instance, say you work somewhere and um, they give you, sometimes you have, like, cars and stuff and you have to, like, swipe it in or something like that. That's what the driver's license was. It was an employee card. And so with your employee card, when you swipe in um, or maybe you have a number or, you know, whatever it is, and depending on where you work at, you may have sometimes, sometimes a number and you have to type that number in or when you have a card, you have to swipe the card. The card or the number is never an identification of the the individual. It's just to show that that person may you know um, work somewhere or something. So, so with the employee um, that driver's license being an employee card, it was it couldn't it it just what's the word? It it never could identify the individual that is holding the um the card. And so um, I just wanted to add that, that the, the driver's license yeah. is really in a B car because um, if you have a driver's license, you're really saying that you're an employee of some of the software. Um, yes, right. And the right. question yes. is, yes. 
Right. Exactly. And so the the question the question would be, who do you work for, and, and why haven't you been getting paid? And where's my paycheck? <laughs> where's my paycheck? <laughs> You mean if you're an employee, right. where's the paycheck? Right, right, right. But that's right. what the part indicates. That's yes, because that's right out of the um the, the the program, the driver's license program, and and the um the uh, statutes at large. That's what the driver's license is the, is, the, is for employees, and that's right out of the um the program, okay. the driver's license program. And what's the title? Any is driver's license program, or. Um, uh, it's, it's it's called oh. driver's license program something, or um Department of Transportation. Something. Yeah, it's Department yes. of Transportation driver's license program. That's what that's yes. what it says. Um, actually, it's motor vehicle and drivers program, driving program, something like that. But mm-hmm. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna do a whole series on that as well. Yeah. Um, Final so call series on that one. Yes. Yes, we're going to do a series. That's going to be part of the final call series as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that. That um and uh, in the near near future. And um, Sister Jayana, thank you so much for that information. And uh, let's see. That is the that we don't have time for any more callers. So what we're going to do is make sure and check us back here Tuesday at 9.30 for Principles of Nationality in Action. And for all those listening or will listen, we're going to close out with uh, a great message to all Moors because it's time for everybody. Uh, a great message for Moors and the those other citizens, modern Europeans, this is it's this is a time for everybody to stand up. Islam. Mm-hmm. Stand in the end, you'll still be you. One that's done all the things you set out to do. Stand. There's a cross for you.